Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. So thanks to the guys who created the Battlestar Galactica game on the Nintendo Switch, at the end of this video we're going to be announcing a small competition where you could win one of four copies of the game. As we do every month, we try to round up as many of the games that have slipped through the net. So here's our buy, avoid or wait for a sale list. A big thanks to Isha Gaming and Jace Glover who have helped with this list. First up then we have Battlestar Galactica Deadlock, which launched at £24.29 with a 10% discount, but the base price is £26.99. Now this is a strategy game where you can pause the action to make your decisions. It does have turns, but at the end of each conflict, you can watch the entire battle play out in real time and these are quite epic. The performance is okay on the Nintendo Switch, it takes a slight visual downgrade but still looks decent. You can build up your fleet and you'll be fighting in the first Cylon War. Anyone who's familiar with the series, there's some big names in here as well. And all the spaceships from the series, such as the Viper Squadron and the Raptor Scouts. Not only will you be controlling the battles, but you'll also be overseeing your entire fleet, building up new ships and fighting conflicts across the entire solar system. It's a very good game and I'm quite surprised by why they actually stealth dropped this out of nowhere, but I guess sometimes that gets a game a little bit more attention than putting it on the upcoming list. Either way, we've got four copies of this to give away. All we want you to do is write down in the comments in as brief a way as possible who your favourite character is from the series. Now obviously, mine is Gaius Baltar. If ever there was a character who goes from being absolutely loathed by the audience to loved, it was him. Without any spoilers, by far my favourite. Let us know down in the comments who yours was. It's a very good game and there's a lot of content here. It performs well enough on the Switch, but for me it's a touch on the pricier side. I would say this would be a wait for a sale. The next game is called Freedom Finger. Now, if you think this sounds strange, let me tell you it plays even stranger. It's a side-scrolling shoot 'em up in the style of an R-type game. However, you play as a ship that is a chrome finger. It can also turn itself into a fist for more damage and you can grab enemy ships and throw them back to their source. Despite being absolutely bonkers with brilliant voice acting that's completely off the wall, the core gameplay is surprisingly good with a few new twists on the shmup genre. The only negative for me is that the game lacks a multiplayer. It would have been perfect with a friend because that humour would have been a good laugh between the two of you. As it is, it has online leaderboards and an arcade mode to keep you busy as well and this does have an absolutely brilliant soundtrack as you can hear, but as Glenn just pointed out to me, there are a lot of excellent shoot 'em ups on the Nintendo Switch. I think it's a great game, and if not having multiplayer doesn't bother you, then pick it up, but for everyone else, maybe wait for a slight sale. The next title, not to be mistaken for Marble in the Wood, <coughs> ish. It is yet another Metroidvania on Switch, but interestingly you can complete the entire game without having to fight any of the main enemies, it's just those bosses that you'll have to tackle. Also nice to see are multiple endings, if you decide to go down the non-combat route. Here you play as a young girl who cannot actually carry the sword she has, and so you have to kind of jump up, leave it behind you, and then when you retract it, it will do damage to enemies in between. As you go about your quest you'll have many boss fights, and once you've defeated them you take on their characteristics. For example, the first boss is a spider, and once killed, you can then transform into a spider. It's easily done by using the right stick. There's also a touch of Metroid controls here where you can lock yourself into position to aim your web. I did find a few times where controlling and swinging was a touch tricky, but these moments were few and far between. The overall experience is very unique, and I don't want this one to get lost in the pile. At around about £12, I think it's on sale 10% off, and for me, I'd say this is a buy. First game from Jace then is Eternoblade 2. Eternoblade 2 is the follow-up to the original title released on the 3DS back in 2014. The developers state they've improved on the first game by listening to all the feedback from the first, but this hack and slash platformer is still very rough around the edges. The story jumps around a lot and requires the player to be familiar with the first game so anyone new to the series may find themselves a touch lost. The gameplay combines elements of hack and slash, puzzle platformer and even a metroidvania, but unfortunately there is little focus and they haven't perfected any one of the styles, causing the game to feel a touch messy and often frustrating. The main focus of the game, the combat, is sometimes rewarding 
but the random third person perspective sections are confusing and feel a touch clunky. I'd say for me, this one is an avoid. Mistover is a dungeon crawler that can be simply described as an anime darkest dungeon. Playing much like the aforementioned title, it does bring some fresh elements to the table. The game sees you recruiting a team to venture forth into a myriad of randomly generated dungeons and forces you to think tactically about every move. Each step within the dungeon uses up resources and running out can spell your early demise. Featuring permadeath and a ticking doomsday clock, the game is not for the faint-hearted. Encountering enemies within the dungeons will start a battle. The turn-based combat sees each team facing off in various formations where abilities can only be used depending on where the character is standing. Featuring numerous attacks, synergies, buffs and debuffs, the combat is deep, difficult and immensely rewarding. Newcomers to the genre may want to wait for a sale or at least check out the demo first, but fans of Darkest Dungeon will find plenty to like here as they wait for the release of Darkest Dungeon 2. This for me is a definite buy. Next up we have River City Melee Mac, which is an updated version of River City Melee Battle Royale Special which released on the PS4 back in 2017. Set in the River City or Kunio Kun world, this is a battle royale game that sees four teams fighting it out to see who will be the last one standing. You can pick from any number of the high schools featured in the numerous games over the years, and you can even choose to play as teams representing the dodgeball and football games from years past, which is a nice touch. You can set the rules to how many rounds or how long they last, and use a variety of weapons to whittle your opponent's health down. As well as single player matches against the AI plus a story mode, there is also the option for two to four couch multiplayer, as well as an online mode. The graphics use the classic sprites the series is known for, and they look great in HD, and the gameplay is a huge amount of fun, especially if you have like-minded friends. As a single player experience, I'd say wait for a sale, but stick it on your wish list at the very least for now. Stellatum is a vertical scrolling shoot 'em up with a twin stick control method. It has some interesting ideas, such as a crafting system where you will be awarded blueprints and you can upgrade your ship, but this is needlessly confusing and it took me quite a while just to work out how to select a new blueprint. The text in handheld mode is so small I could barely read it and your ships have that slow to get going, difficult to stop inertia based movement that the original Asteroids game used. Now Asteroids is a classic but that heavy awkward style of movement in a shoot 'em up where you are being shot at from every conceivable angle is quite frankly a terrible idea. It plays as well as it sounds, plus there is the fact that your gun overheats just to increase the frustration. Your ship is so sluggish and I appreciate that that's where the upgrades would come in, but upgrades in a game should not be to improve what comes across as bad controls. Add to that that the right stick is way too sensitive in controlling the directional movement of your craft and you have a recipe for disaster. I appreciate what the developer was going for here, but if you want to reinvent the wheel, you need to make sure that wheel 2.0 is pretty damn spectacular. This isn't, and unfortunately, it's an avoid. The first game I'm going to talk about in this video is Nino Kuni, released on PlayStation 3 originally. What a magical game. With a story that starts out with your mom dying, the game already there makes sure you are emotionally attached to what's to come. You play as Oliver, who is teleported to another world, going on quite the fantastic adventure. It plays like a traditional RPG with an overworld and a whole variety of locations that the story takes you through. With combat, you enter a combat screen where you select what to do and watch that action play out. Play as Oliboy or one of your collectible Pokemon-like creatures called Familiars. A game I remember on the PS3 now ported beautifully over to the Nintendo Switch. In my opinion, this is a must-buy game because it is so packed with content, it actually has a really deep lore. This is a 10 out of 10 game, if I can say so myself, and if you like this sort of genre, traditional RPGs, it's a fantastic adventure that I highly recommend to everyone. This one is a buy. Now, Cat Tales. Cat Tales opens up with a heartbreaking story of a cat being left and abandoned by its humans and has to try and make it in the wild. 
You meet other stray cats and quickly learn that several different cat groups has formed territories that they reign over. It is a cat RPG game. Hunt for mice to survive and level up your several cat skills. Hunting is hard, but this is definitely a game that surprised me. I want to say buy or wait for sale, so if this seemed interesting to you, I'm gonna say buy. If you're curious about this game, I'm gonna say wait for a sale, so I'm gonna say wait for a sale. Maybe. The next game is Super Neptunia RPG. As an actual long fan of the Hyperdimension Neptunia series, this spin-off game to the franchise disappointed me. This time, as a side-scrolling turn-based RPG, the game is what it is. Performance-wise, it feels laggy and struggling with its frame rate. On the plus side though, the cities look nice, and for the most part, the game has a very interesting piano-like soundtrack. But overall, I have to say avoid on this one. It is not the best at what it is trying to be, this specific genre. There are better games in this genre than this one. It was overall just dull and uh, uninspired. Gonna have to say avoid on that. Now, thank you so much, Switchup, for having me on your channel. I love your channel. It's one of the best Switch channels out there. Now, if you wanna watch what I do here on YouTube, I have a channel called Isha Gaming where I do a lot of reviews of Switch games. So please check it out and make sure you subscribe. Thank you for having me, guys. See you around. Thanks to Irene for that. Go and check out her channel. Make sure to let us know who your favorite character is from the Battlestar Galactica series for a chance to win that competition. And we'll let you know the winners in an upcoming video. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya.